Uh, the real perk of this job was getting to see a run through in the rehearsal hall, which as some of this, I know many of you know that is a super incredible way to see a play. And so it's quite something to cut with under the fluorescent lights in room 119 of the Performing Arts Center. And so if you can really sell it there, you can sell it anywhere. And um, so seeing it here tonight uh, with all the lighting that also helps tell the story, it's the same story, but it's completely different, <coughs> is, is incredibly amazing. Um, can you talk about that a little bit about, I'm sh assuming you first saw it a little bit like I did the other day. Um, yeah, yeah, that, that was actually the first, the first time I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> that same <thing. laughs> that, that same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, like Eric was saying, I, I have, I've only been on the project a, a few weeks, but one of the first things that he said to me was that um, something along the lines of that it, it has to have the, the flair of a concert but the sensitivity of a play, basically. Um, and that you have to really think about it in both ways. And, and that was a really exciting challenge to, you know, to get to have the, the fun and excitement and the energy of a, of a concert and then be able to work on finessing these these moments that become so personal and so uh, uh, dealing with like the, the little minutia of each moment and each character that Matt has created and kind of bringing out each of their personalities in the lights as well um, has been a really kind of exciting journey over the past couple of weeks. Very exciting. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my, subtext. <laughs> <laughs> well, obviously it's, it's a lot of show. <laughs> it's funny, I laughed at different places yeah. because of the lights. The lights so, are funny. Yeah. They're very funny. <laughs> <laughs> all righty. Um, let's open it up to you all. We'll come back. I'm sure we'll get to um, some of the other elements as well. I would just remind you, this is such a special night um, to have these people here because they're going to wing their way out of town pretty soon. Um, but comments, questions, who'd like to go first? Yes, sir, Mr. Elvin. Yeah. If you worry as we move to the larger stage that it's going to be difficult to maintain the intensity of a well, this we joke that if you know if we could play this room, we can play Broadway because it's a, this is a really it's a, quite a large for a small theater. It's, it's it's quite big. So this is the biggest place we've been. And actually, where we're going to New York is smaller. It's 150 oh. seats. Actually, the footprint. It's act, this whole set is going on a truck to New York. So it's the whole design moves. But the theater we're moving to only has about our front section of seats. Um, so we designed it for both. So it could it could reach the scale of the bigger room. But it was an experiment. I think mean, question, Matt. What's it like for you to perform? We've now done 50 seat rooms, <laughs> 250 seat rooms, this room and next uh, New York. What's that like for you? Different. <laughs> um, no, it's good. It's uh, This is the biggest sort of height wise that we've ever been. I performed it in my high school once um, where I like went back and did it for my whole high school and all my teachers, um, which was weird too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, but I think you know there's there's an intimacy to the to the story and to the um, to the storytelling that is conducive I think to a smaller room. But then when the when the when the room opens up, I do feel like the story and the sound of the story uh, can fill the room. And so every time I am surprised that people laugh in the same places and people uh, feel in the same places. I feel the audience uh, sort of zip up in certain places um, at the same exact time every every place that we've been to. Whether it be a tiny, tiny room or a, or a really massive room, and uh, and I think that's a testament to the storytelling and the work that we've done together because uh, it's, it's sort of it's sort of wild. Great. Yes. Sir. I'm not following myself, but it seems like an incredibly athletic event mm -hmm. to pull this off. What's the biggest challenge to do the shows? Um, I've been doing the show now. This is my like fifth year doing it, I think. So just getting uh, the energy to get up and do it again uh, is a large part of it. Um, the thing that makes it different and unique, and I think so special, is that there's no one else on stage with me except for the fractured parts of my own schizophrenic mind. Um, <laughs> and so I really do rely on the audience so much to uh, to feed me with whatever energy they have. And so each show does tend to be a little different. I think the words are the same, the story is the same. But the show, the feeling of the show, and the energy of the show is different every night. And uh, and that helps me get, get through each and every night because each audience is different, each audience is specific. And uh, because there's no one, up, no one else on stage to feed off of energy-wise, I'm really dependent on the audience's energy to uh, sort of fuel the, fuel the performance. Terrific. So were we an energetic audience? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you were. Yeah, 
you guys were great. I, um, Eric did a little warm up with you guys, which is cool. Um, and uh, yeah, you can normally tell within the first like five minutes of the show whether or not the show is going to be uh, an energetic type of uh, type of crowd. And I thought you guys were great tonight. I was really, I was so pleased. It's been a very, very long week for all of us here, and uh, to be able to have as supportive an audience as you guys tonight was uh, definitely capped off our week in a very, very nice way. Terrific. Yes, sir. Yeah, no. uh, what inspired you to, to write the story? <laughs> and then you said five years, so mm -hmm. how has it changed? Um, I was inspired to write the story. Uh, I didn't get cast in a production of The Seagull. <laughs> at Northwestern, which is where I went to school and where Eric and I met. I think he talked about that. Um, and so I decided, I was 20 at the time, which was, I'm 24 now, and uh, I, I just, you know, I was in one of those places in my life where I was like, I want to do something extreme. Um, <laughs> and so I applied to the uh, Edinburgh Fringe Festival with the show without having written a word, um, just to see if I could get in, and we did. And then I realized I had to write, write, a, write a show, right? Um, and the main thing for me, though, is I've been lucky enough to go to theater. My, I grew up in New York, and I've been lucky enough to go to theater my entire life. And it's played a huge part in my, in my upbringing and uh, in sort of shaping to be the person that I am. And, and yet I realized as I went to the theater my entire life, I was, uh, I was one of the youngest people there every time. And uh, for me, a large impetus for the show was to get young people excited about the show and tell stories that people might be able to see in themselves on stage, young people specifically. And that is where the hip hop medium comes together. I think the story elements and different storytelling elements come from that essential core thing about hip hop, which is at its base, you know, it's about putting this record with this record and making something new. Uh, I just extended that to make it, you know, I took this part of this story and this part of this story and this part of my life and, uh, and, and made it something, uh, something new, I guess. Yes, sir. Sir John says that if it doesn't come from the heart, it's not true. Yeah. But I would hope that this story of this young man is not autobiographical. <laughs> <laughs> no, my parents are really nice people. I have to say, <laughs> when I saw the show at, uh, at school, it, uh, I went, there was you know, a bunch of 20 year olds, and me and my former professor, and these two people, very not attractive couple in their early 50s, or folks? Now they are. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I accepted the play, you know struck, and you could feel the entire room look over at this, this couple. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you monsters. <laughs> they're, not, they're the nicest people in the world. Yeah. They're really, really nice. And they're very game about this show. Oh, good. I was so afraid of it. <laughs> so it's over. I know now. Yes? Uh, I'm curious about the journey of a show, a play, to New York. Uh, I presume it has a lot to do with relationships that maybe Eric has or Matt has, but I'm curious about do you hold out to get to the right theater in New York so it's sort of a pipeline to bigger theaters? Does it matter that you were in Kansas City and performed and it's well received? <laughs> Is Kansas City a, a good place compared to being in an L.A.? Well, I think, you, go to go to uh, you know, th it's, it's a great question. And, I, and this being both of our first show going to New York, uh, <laughs> I'll let you know in a month. Uh, but, I, you know, the, the, we've been working on the show for, for and had different opportunities to take it to New York. And it wasn't until we had the um, opportunity to take it to uh, our, our partners at Lincoln Center that we really knew that it was the right fit to go into a place that is so nurturing and supportive of, of emerging artists and major artists and to find um, a, a home with great producers who would take care of it and love it as much as we do um, was really essential. And, that, and there's a huge differences in New York of going with commercial producer, which we had opportunities to do that, um, or to go with uh, nonprofit producers and then finding the right place for it. But this is starting a program at Lincoln Center called LCT3 which is a program to support emerging artists uh, at, at Lincoln Center. And it's actually not, it's not, not on the Lincoln Center campus, it's gonna be on the Duke, at the Duke on 42nd Street. So it felt like the right frame, it's, it's a new thing for the city, it's a, the first play in a new program, it just felt like such an amazing opportunity, uh, and the right one after many sort of near misses and other, and other chances. The Kansas City question is interesting to me, one of my objectives, um, what I'm trying to demonstrate with this production is that Kansas City can be the ideal place to try work out, I'm, I'm so thrilled the response tonight and last night, you know, this is the edgiest thing we've got all year, and the enthusiasm of the audience really shows that we can do work that's gonna be cutting edge in New York, we can do that here uh, and, and, and give it its best possible um, support and, and life. 